So we are in the middle of a global pandemic and global financial crisis. And once we get over this, I think it's going to probably come back in the fall. So you need to start getting prepared. If you are watching this, you are into growing your own food. So let's talk about five ways to build a resilient homestead that can protect you from a financial crisis. All right, hey y'all, my name is Bo Brotherton with Better Together Life. If you haven't seen our channel, if you're new to us, my family in 2018 sold our suburban home. It was about 2,000 square foot home, typical on an eighth of an acre lot to move on our seven and a half acres and we converted a shed into a almost tiny house, a really small house. We have four kids and we have two dogs that we all live inside of about 800 square feet on our seven and a half acres. And one of the reasons why we did this, I didn't want to be a weirdo, but I kind of had this feeling that there was going to be some sort of economic downturn or something happening soon. We always have some sort of financial crisis every eight to 10 years, and we have been long overdue for some sort of crisis and this is just a really bizarre one that we're in right now and what I wanted to be able to do was build some sort of hedge around my family so that we could provide for the basic food shelter protection with my family and it kind of happened so with what's going on right now we are not really feeling a lot of the hurt that a lot of people are I feel bad for that you know, like we were able to build uh, businesses online. I'm not gonna be talking about the financial stuff. We're really gonna just be focusing on the homestead part of this, not really talking about passive income or anything like that. We, we do have all of our income is from passive income. But today we're gonna be talking primarily about providing for food for your family and how to build a resilient homestead even if you just live in a suburban neighborhood. Finley is interrupting. I haven't even started yet. People, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Let's talk about why is it important to take any size land and make it something that provides for your family. As I said in the intro, we are in a global pandemic. At the time of me recording this, I think it was last I checked, over 6 million people have applied for unemployment. That is just insane. And everybody keeps saying that this will end. That's what all the media and what the government is saying that we will get through this and it will end. And I do agree that hopefully in the summer that this is going to, if it's not end, it's definitely going to slow down. Also what these experts are saying is that it might come back in the fall. There might be a big second wave of this coming back in the fall. We're gonna have this weird new normal. I don't even think that entertainment like movie theaters or like the NFL, I don't think that these things are coming back this summer. I think that those industries are going to be closed down or really, really slowed down for the next year. We are in a full 12 month just reworking of everything of our culture. Let's do it right now. Five ways to build a resilient homestead. Number one, number one, this is not going to be a surprise. Hey, I'm gonna say grow food. That is something that you need to be taking seriously now. Yes, our systems of food is still mostly in order but I think you will start seeing shortages in the grocery stores. I hate saying this, I hate it, but because it just all it does is just make more shortages in the grocery stores. Right now, those are the things that you can buy in the grocery store, is you can buy all of your fruits and veggies and the world's ending and all the food is gone. There's no toilet paper, but nobody wants to eat organic kale. So that stuff is still on the shelf, that's funny to me. But right now, I think that you do need to grow a lot of your calories because I think that things are going to get worse through the summer. I think we'll eventually come back out of this, but for right now, I think you need to start growing food. 
If you're in the south, like for us, we've already started our sweet potato slips. So we're gonna be growing some sweet potatoes. We already have a ton of potatoes that we've started and hopefully those come up really good. Uh, our garden is starting to come on and we're just doing everything that we can to expand it and to stay vigilant on our garden. If I was still in suburbia with our HOA, this would be the time that I really start challenging those HOA rules. I'm not telling you to do this, I'm just saying what I would probably do is I would find some way to grow productive and pretty food in my front yard. Then in the backyard, I would just be growing at every single spot that I could. Every corner of my backyard, I would be planting something and growing something that I could eat. So I'm saying grow food, grow food, grow food. Buy some fruit trees, start doing that. You know, things like blackberries, like bushes, those things come on fast. Mulberries typically will have a fast return. But if you can buy some potted plants, citrus, it grows citrus in a container, and then you can bring them in in the winter. And then also fast things like radishes, lettuce, like all those things, that is really, really high nutritious food that will be good for you. So start growing food. Did I beat that dead horse enough? Grow some food. All right, the second step to building a resilient homestead that will protect you for a financial crisis is it's boring. I'm sorry, it is boring, but it also is important in order to have a homestead. Something that you will learn from most homesteaders is we are all frugal. Like a lot of us are frugal. We want to save money. We want to grow food. We want to spend less than we make. So the second reason is drastically reduce your expenses. Try to eliminate debt as much as you can. Like I said in the video of what to do your stimulus package, I would halt on your debt snowball and save as much money as you can right now because you just want, you just want an umbrella. It's raining, funny enough it's raining right now, is you wanna be covered for anything. So you need cash right now. I would halt your debt, but once things pick up, eliminate that debt as fast as you can. We converted a shed into a house. So now we live super micro small. It's all paid for. We barely have debt on our Honda Pilot, which we were about to pay off if this crisis didn't happen. So now we're slowing down, paying the last $3,000 on our car to be able to save it. And then we have, I think about 16,000 on our land. That is all, like, so most people have like a mortgage, a huge, that's our mortgage for our owner financing mortgage for the, the person that we bought this from. And then we are debt free in our 30s, completely debt free in our 30s, including mortgage. So if you can eliminate debt, it will give you so much peace and so much resilience that you can take the rest of that money and put it onto your suburban lot to be able to grow more food, have this hedge that I'm talking about for your family. Number three, if you wanna be resilient, you need, like I said, to be able to provide calories. If you have followed us at all in the last six months, you know that we are the crazy sourdough people. So number three is to learn how to make sourdough. You guys, it takes three ingredients. I love the fact that all I have to buy is salt and flour, and then I can make bread. Yes, it takes water, but we all have water. Just get a Berkey, water filter and then you're good. Uh, I doubt that they're gonna turn off the taps anytime soon, I'm not worried about that. Flour, salt and water and you can make the most nutritious and calorically dense food for your family. I don't care about those easy bake, like, oh, you know, here's the easiest bread to make, put it in your bread maker, your bread machine. No, don't do that. No, 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 no. No, that stuff is still junk. If you use yeast, if you're having to use the yeast packets, no, it's not good. We're talking about fermented bread. This is what you should be doing. If you eat bread, and if you're like, I'm not gonna be full on paleo, I still like my bread, I still like those kind of carbs, this is what you should be doing. Sourdough bread, sourdough pizza, 
sourdough cinnamon rolls, sourdough pancakes, all of these things are slow fermented food. You're getting good bacteria into your body. We're going back to the traditions of what our great grandparents, how they used to have food. We're back going back way back biblically for how they provided food for their family. They had this alive, active yeast, this starter that is a living organism. Sourdough bread, make it. Learn how to make it. Watch our video up here about how to make sourdough bread and make some sourdough bread. Find a starter, make it. All right, number four, you need to find a way to raise livestock animals on any property. As long as you're not in a apartment, you can grow livestock animals. We had pet rabbits in our backyard in suburbia guys i said it in my stimulus check video one of the things that is growing short in the stores is meat like our, the grass-fed beef that we always buy the organic chicken that we buy it is going away <laughs> and i don't know when it's going to come back i'm saying that you need to get some sort of protein for your nutrition and one great way to do that is chicken eggs. I would figure out a way to get chicken eggs in suburbia. I, or if you don't want to do that, you can do quail. Quail eggs are great also. So quail or chicken eggs. Pair that with what we just talked about with sourdough. If you've never had a freshly baked slice of sourdough bread with a farm fresh egg on top. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And also, speaking of raising some poultry, I said in that stimulus check video that we were gonna be buying some meat birds and building a chicken tractor and yoo-hoo, yes, I got it. So this is John Siskovich. I got it on Amazon. I will put an affiliate link down below because I think it's a really good book and I highly recommend it. It's super cool. Like there's lots of good pictures because yes, I like pictures and it just really shows you like it gives you a cut list. This is rad. Like this is super, super good. This is a great book. I am really excited about building our chicken tractors and we're going to be building it this, this model. So if you can see there, uh, right there, you can see that's the design. Uh, you'll see this a lot on YouTube. I would say it's either this chicken tractor or Joel Salatin's. These are the top ones. So I love things function stacking and multi-purpose. So I think that this can be used for more things than just chicken. I think you can put turkeys in here. You can't put turkeys in Joel's tractors. I think we would be able to put some layers in here for a time being, kind of retrofit it a little bit for that. Lots of things, I'm excited, but I will give you my experience on building the chicken tractor. Also, I think that you need to look into raising rabbits. It is one of the fastest ways to get protein for your family. And yes, I don't care what you're saying. If you're talking about like, oh no, rabbit starvation, which yes, like it, it's insane that people put comments on here on YouTube about rabbit starvation. So idiotic. Why? Who only eats rabbit? That's insane. That's stupid. Nobody, I've never said that, and nobody would ever say to only eat rabbit. Get some butter, store up some bacon grease or some olive oil. That is good fat. Yes, you just add that to the rabbit, some yogurt. There's an infinite amount of ways to get fat into your body. Yes, you need some fat. I'm not saying that you don't need fat. I'm just saying that rabbit, high quality protein, Eat it with something that has fat. I mean, I, this is this is silly that I'm even talking about. It. Oh, and also, I'm going to put a link down below for our upcoming course this summer, our course on how to raise rabbits. I'm going to be showing you everything in terms of breeding rabbits to processing rabbits and all of our recipes of how we cook rabbit on our homestead. It, you're going to love it. It's going to be an excellent course. Link down below so that we know that there is enough interest in this course. You will be the first to know and also great deals for you guys that sign up right now. All right, the last one, number five, the fifth step on how to build a resilient homestead that will protect you from a financial crisis is having an entrepreneurial mindset. 
You guys, this is, if you have an entrepreneurial mindset, you're not only going to just survive a, a, a crisis, you might even thrive. Yes, there are so many people that are hurting right now, but there are also people that are turning this into a positive. If you are able to be a problem solver, to have this entrepreneurial mindset, you will be able to see people that have problems and go and help them fix it. There are people that are creating new businesses right now based off of food delivery. There are so many more businesses right now that are capitalizing on this. But even beyond building a business, it is just thinking entrepreneurial-wise. So like for Kelly and I, we saw that this toilet paper shortage was coming through. And so we thought, hey, we might just turn this to a positive of us. And we were able to get in contact with a company that sells bidets. <laughs> and we ended up getting a free bidet to review. So I'll <laughs> we'll be reviewing a bidet on our channel here soon. We are turning this, like I talked to you with the chicken tractors and raising a, a, a couple of rounds of meat chickens. You can't buy chickens. We have the land, so we're gonna be raising chickens. Entrepreneurial mindset. Kelly was able to trade a thing of sourdough starter for two fig tree cuttings. That is an entrepreneurial mindset. That is it. Like if you have this type of mindset that you can solve problems, that you can do some fun, crazy stuff with the things that you have available in order to get the things that are not available that you want, this is what you do. This is the mindset that allowed Kelly and I to get from having a nine to five job in suburbia with two kids to buying property and being able to move to our homestead where we can homeschool our now four kids from our land, from our property, and all of this is passive income so that we can do the life that we want. Because I saw a problem, I got pen and paper, and I just started writing down every crazy idea. Instead of saying, I can't do this, and you end up saying, how? can I do this? That's whenever things start working. You say, how can I do this? And that's whenever, whenever you're, sh you're showering, that whenever you're doing the dishes, whenever you are falling asleep or waking up, that your brain is allowed to compute this question and you will start coming up with so many awesome ideas that you just have to get pen and paper and write it down. This is the most important thing if, if you can have this mindset. So please remember, like Finley said, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm because it helps us out a lot. Leave a comment down below. Please also go get John's book for the chicken tractors and sign up for the rabbit course. Say, smash that like button. Smash. Say, hit the like button. No, say, you say, say hit, say hit the. Hit the button. Say hit the like button. Oh, I can't press. No, not you. 